Everyone dreams of saying I do to the perfect husband, having a grand wedding, and living happily ever after. But rarely do we think the fairy tale wedding we dreamt of will end up as a front page headline of Tinseltown tabloids. In this series, we explore the rise and fall of Hollywood's greatest romances and how the most blissful marriages ended in divorce riddled with scandal. The Glamour Files presents Hollywood Divorce. In 1990s Hollywood, Pamela Anderson became a Hollywood star on the rise, known for her role as the blonde bombshell on the hit TV show Baywatch. But when she married rock and roll drummer Tommy Lee, they became one of Hollywood's sexiest and baddest couples. Together, they endured a blissful union, two kids, and a sex tape which crashed and burned. So how did Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee's hot and heavy romance turn for the worse and lead to their bombshell Hollywood divorce? Keep watching to find out more. Today we know Pam Anderson for her iconic role on the hit 90s show Baywatch, her career as a Playboy model, and last but not least, her sex tape with ex-husband Tommy Lee. But before Anderson became an actress and the blonde babe of the 1990s, Anderson was just an ordinary girl from Canada who became a cover girl for the October 1989 issue of Playboy magazine and eventually the centerfold after moving to Los Angeles. Anderson won a role of C.J. Parker on Baywatch, where she played her part for five seasons between 1992 and 1997, making her one of the longest serving cast members and forging her popularity among international viewers. Pam Anderson and Greek-born heavy metal drummer Tommy Lee were at the pinnacle of their careers before meeting on New Year's Eve in 1994. Lee, as America's bad boy drummer from the rock band Motley Crue, and Anderson, the sultry lifeguard on the hit series Baywatch. According to the New York Post, Anderson and Lee's world were headed on a collision course in the mid-90s, given their heightened status in Hollywood. The outlet reported that the Playboy model turned actress and the rock star met on New Year's Eve in 1994 on LA Sunset Strip at Sanctuary, a club Anderson partly owned. Reportedly, Anderson was so captivated by Lee that she felt compelled to send him a shot of Goldschlager, prompting the musician to slide into her booth and ratchet up the charm the rest of the night. Quote, he came up, grabbed me, and licked my face, the actress said in a 1995 interview for Movie Line magazine. Quote, I thought he was a cool, friendly, nice guy. I gave him my number, unquote. The couple played phone tag for six weeks, though that's not how he described it in Motley Crue's autobiography, The Dirt, Confessions of the World's Most Notorious Rock Band. In an excerpt provided to Rolling Stone in 2001, Tommy Lee recalls finally getting the message he had been waiting for from Pam Anderson. Pamela invited Tommy Lee over. Anderson says, quote, Tommy, damn, you're not there. It's Pamela. I've got 24 hours to play and I want to play with you. Call me at the Hotel Nico at 5 p.m. And we'll rendezvous, Lee says, Anderson told him. Psyched to finally see her since their meeting at Sanctuary, Lee brushed his teeth, threw on his dirtiest leather pants, slipped into an old t-shirt that stained Cabillo, and raced to the hotel. The problem was, according to the book excerpt, Anderson never showed up at the hotel. Tommy Lee desperately dialed the hotel numerous times, waited for an hour in the lobby, and called every number at his disposal to try and locate Anderson. Finally, just before 10 p.m., Anderson called to tell Lee she was headed to Cancun for a photo shoot the next day. Quote, what about me? Lee asked. Anderson wasn't having it and made it crystal clear to Tommy Lee that under no circumstance was he to book a flight to Mexico. Her reason was simple. She'd been booked for 18-hour days and, quote, there was no time to play, unquote. Lee played it cool with Anderson. He said he'd call Anderson when she got back from her work trip, but what he actually did was book a flight to Cancun. Then on February 15th of 1995, Lee invited himself to Cancun to see Anderson. Lee then left a message on her answering machine to inform her that he was, quote, coming to find your ass. 
He eventually tracked down Anderson at the sixth hotel on his list, the Ritz-Carlton. And when they said there was a Pamela Anderson staying there, I practically wet myself with excitement, unquote, Lee said in the book. Quote, I left a message or six asking if she wanted to meet me for a drink, unquote. The ordeal apparently left Anderson seething, but at the insistence of a friend who reminded Anderson about the lengths Lee went to see her, Anderson relented and agreed to see him for one drink. They'd eventually stumble upon Senior Frogs before returning to Anderson's hotel room. Quote, when we finally fell asleep, that was the first time the entire night that we stopped looking into each other's eyes, unquote, Lee recalled. Lee wrote in the autobiography that he and Anderson spent every night together following their first date, going to a bar and a club, hopping and enjoying Mexico's picturesque beach. When Anderson was busy with her photo shoot, Lee said he would sit in his hotel room, quote, like a dead man and wait for her to call so I could come back to life, unquote, quote. I couldn't believe that it was possible to feel so happy, unquote, Lee adds in the book, quote, for a so-called bad boy, I was turning into a pansy. It felt like our hearts had been hot glued together, unquote. When Anderson's photo shoot ended, the new couple decided to stay for an extra couple of days. And while at a disco club dubbed La Boom, Lee says he took off his pinky ring and put it on Anderson's finger and asked her to marry him. Quote, Anderson said yes, hugged me, and stuck her tongue down my throat, unquote, Lee recalls. Quote, the next morning, we asked the hotel to find someone to perform a marriage ceremony. We gave blood, sniffed out a marriage license, and were on the beach getting married before the day was over. Instead of wedding bands, we went for something more permanent, tattoos of each other's names around our fingers, unquote. Their unparalleled magnetism reached new heights when they tied the knot in 1995 after dating for less than a week. After only knowing Lee for four days on February 19th of 1995, Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee wed on a beach with Anderson wearing a white bikini in Cancun, Mexico. It would be Anderson's first marriage. Lee's third after model Elaine Strachuk and actress Heather Locklear. In a November 1998 sit-down with Interview Magazine, Anderson reflected on her marriage. Quote, Tommy and I started out having a very intense, fun, crazy relationship because we were two kids, said Anderson, who was 27 when she wed Lee, who was 32 at the time. We were madly in love. It wasn't like drugs or alcohol or anything like that. We were both just really passionate about life, unquote. When Anderson and Lee got married in Cancun in February of 1995, the young couple arguably represented the ideal expression of America in the 1990s. Beautiful, big-haired, and fun-loving celebrities who partied their faces off in public, no matter the consequences. However, on February 20th of 1995, reality set in for Anderson and Lee on their flight back to L.A. Lee recalled in his band's autobiography that getting off the plane at LAX turned to a storm. Paparazzi swarmed the newly married couple, and when they got to Anderson's home in Malibu, the paparazzi set up camp nearby. Quote, It was like we had gone from the total freedom paradise of Cancun to this hellish prison of Hollywood, Babylon, Lee notes. At home, when Anderson called her mom to deliver the news about her marriage, she apparently didn't take the news well. At the time, Anderson's mother did not know about the marriage. Lee also claims her brother wanted Anderson's address so he could come over and beat him up. Nevertheless, Anderson's family ultimately accepted the nuptials. Anderson soon got pregnant but suffered a miscarriage that left Lee depressed for many months. In the autobiography, Lee says Anderson told him she was four weeks pregnant 10 days after she threw him an extravagant 33rd birthday party. Anderson would later give birth to Brandon Thomas Lee on June 5th of 96. According to Lee, Anderson delivered Brandon to a midwife in the same bedroom where he was conceived. Quote, that was hands down the best part of my life, Lee recalled. Quote, and half an hour later, I sat down at the piano and the song Brandon just came out of me, unquote. Anderson also had Dylan Jagger, born December 29th of 97. What began as a disgruntled electrician selling a safe quickly became an infamous 1990s soap opera of the playmate and the heavy metal drummer that spinned far beyond sex and rock and roll. This would shake Anderson and Lee's marriage to its core. 
It all started when Lee went down to the garage of the Malibu, California mansion where he lived with his new wife, Anderson, in early January of 1996, when he started laughing, wondering to himself if he was going crazy. Quote, Dude, where's the safe? The Motley Crue drummer admittedly had a bad memory, but after everyone Lee knew who could have been there told him they hadn't moved the safe, quote, my heart stopped for a second when I realized it. The sex tape had been stolen, unquote, Lee wrote in his 2004 memoir, Tommyland. Quote, in one theft, we'd lost a big wad of cash and all of our jewelry, guns, and irreplaceable memories, including Anderson's jewelry and family heirlooms. Lee wrote that one of those memories, a 54-minute home video featuring Lee and Anderson, a sex symbol for a generation thanks to Baywatch and Playboy magazine, having about eight minutes of intimacy on their honeymoon. Lee wrote, quote, we did not expect to see one of those memories being sold on TV a few weeks later, unquote. Lee filed the police report and hired a private investigator, but by then had been set in motion and efforts to halt them proved futile. After the couple fired a group of contractors, they were accused of thousands of dollars worth of shoddy work on their mansion, and Rand Gauthier just wanted to come to retrieve his tools at home. But when he and a colleague returned, Lee allegedly pointed a shotgun at them, urging in expletives for the workers to get off the property. When he hit play, Rand Gauthier was dumbfounded in realizing what he had. Feeling humiliated and mistreated, the ex-employee, now known to the world as Rand Gauthier, concocted a plan to exact revenge. As Gauthier said, we put it in and saw what it was, and of course cha-ching, the dollar signs flew before our eyes, unquote. This superstar couple's most intimate moments went global after their very private and intimate sex tape leaked on the internet. Interest in the couple reached a feverish pitch when their sex tape was released. Lee had multi-platinum success with Motley Crue. Anderson was a central character on Baywatch at the time of the show, despite negative reviews from critics. They also had an estimated weekly audience of 1 billion people worldwide at its peak. Sometime after her marriage to Lee, Anderson left the show Baywatch after two seasons. Everyone knew who Anderson was, no matter who you were or where you were. Anderson was in the spotlight when the tape was released. The level of fame meant Anderson and Lee were chased by paparazzi, whose tabloids framed them as sex-addicted narcissists who were as combative as they were photogenic. The couple filed a $10 million lawsuit against Penthouse Magazine, which obtained a copy of the infamous tape. Subsequently, the magazine published in incredible detail the contents of the tape for its June story. The Los Angeles Times would later report that the judge threw out the couple's invasion of privacy lawsuit against Penthouse, citing that images in the story had already been published elsewhere, and that said images accompanied a newsworthy story about the couple and their marriage. According to many reports, the rock star allegedly threw a cameraman to the ground while leaving the famed Viper Room in West Hollywood the months prior. The scuffle was caught on tape and the videographer was thrown to the ground and dislocated his hip due to the attack. According to a spokeswoman for the act at the time, Anderson and Lee were harassed and pepper sprayed by photogs on their way out of the club, triggering an altercation. While bootleg copies had already been floating around for some time, IEG founder Seth Wojarski planned to broadcast a video after a judge refused to issue an injunction against him. Instead, the day after the judge's decision, Wojarski posted the tape on his subscription-based Club Love website on a five-hour loop. After exhausting every avenue affordable to them through the courts, Lee and Anderson signed away the tape's copyright, Rolling Stone reported, under the false impression that Warski had permission to show the tape on his website without allowing them to sell the tape in stores. At the time, the World Wide Web was still in its infancy, prompting the magazine to write, quote, by all accounts, the couple underestimated the reach of the internet, unquote. In addition to the bootleg videos circulating throughout many websites also served as distributors. But Warski's stunt made the video go viral. According to Rolling Stone, the Anderson and Lee video made an estimated 77 million in legal sales for adult websites and distributors in the first 12 months. After that, it became what many considered the greatest love story ever sold. Lee and Anderson were offered big money for the tape, 
The next part is where Anderson and Lee, exhausted and embarrassed by the many lawsuits and depositions they had, made a significant error, experts say. They underestimated the power of the internet. Although, according to Rolling Stone, the couple settled with Warski in late of 1997, they gave him permission to shut the tape online without allowing him to sell it in stores. Quote, it was stolen property. We made a deal to stop all the shenanigans, unquote, Anderson told Bravo in 2015. When the tape was floating around, Anderson said, quote, I was seven months pregnant with Dylan and thinking it was affecting the pregnancy with the stress and said, quote, I'm not going to court anymore. I'm not being deposed anymore by these horny, weird lawyer men. I don't want to talk about my vagina anymore or my public sex, anything, unquote. Anderson maintained that she never watched the tape. She told Ellen 2014 that she didn't know whether her children had seen the sex tape, but that they knew everything about it. Quote, stupid internet, I don't know why everyone's so impressed with it, unquote. Nevertheless, Lee remained disgusted by critics who falsely believed that the couple intentionally released a tape in an attempt to profit from it. Quote, I wish I could say we had the last laugh and financed our kids' future off someone trying to rob us, unquote, Lee wrote in Tommy Land. Quote, but the truth is, I can't. Unquote. The tape has now become one of the first sex tape incidents in Hollywood and a part of Americana. After the lovebirds got married in 1995, Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee's romance lasted about three full years before their divorce. Just seven weeks after the couple's second son Dylan was born, Lee was arrested after Anderson called the police and accused him of kicking her in the back and buttocks as she held their two-month-old newborn son Dylan. Tommy Lee Motley Crue drummer was arrested for spousal abuse, child abuse, and unlawful possession of a firearm in 1998. According to the police report, Tommy Lee assaulted Pam Anderson at their home in Malibu. At the time, the cops said that Anderson had a broken nail and visible red marks on her back. Within days of the incident, Pamela Anderson Lee and Tommy Lee's Hollywood divorce was publicly declared. Pamela Anderson Lee filed for a divorce from Tommy Lee after three years of marriage on February 28th of 1995, days after Tommy was charged with spousal and child abuse. It wasn't the first time Anderson filed for divorce, though she had previously filed for divorce from Lee in November of 1996, but she dropped it shortly after they reconciled and had their son Dylan. In addition to filing for divorce in 1997, Anderson requested custody of their two sons, Brandon Thomas and Dylan Jagger, admits the divorce. In his 2001 memoir, The Dirt, Lee said, quote, he couldn't understand why Pamela had followed through with pressing charges and that she, quote, was probably scared and thought I was some crazy violent monster. She probably wanted an easy way out of a difficult situation. As much as I loved Pamela, she had a problem dealing with things, unquote. While reflecting, Lee wrote about he and Anderson having kids so fast that they never had a chance to build a solid relationship. Lee said, quote, I asked her later why we didn't work on our relationship more. Anderson said, quote, we couldn't. I was pregnant the whole time. According to the Associated Press, Lee pled no contest and was sentenced to six months in L.A. County Jail on May 20th, 1998, serving four years behind bars for a felony spousal abuse case. Lee was also given three years probation, ordered to stay away from Anderson, avoid drugs and alcohol, and donate 5 k to a battered woman's shelter. According to Lee, quote, They threw me in an isolated cell and shut the heavy door which sent a loud metal thud reverberating throughout the cell block, unquote. Lee recalled his experience in his band's autobiography, quote, It was the loneliest effing sound I've ever heard, unquote. Tommy Lee was released from prison after serving four months of his sentence, but in May of 2000, Rolling Stones reported that Anderson was a witness to Lee's alleged drinking, which violated his probation. Lee was sentenced to five days behind bars. He later went to AA. In 2018, he was accused of abusing alcohol with his son, Brandon. Brandon alleged that the alcoholism was a true result of the incident. Anderson became engaged to model Marcus Schneckberg, but they broke up in 2001. She then became engaged to singer Kid Rock, but she broke up with him in 2003. On July 18, 2006, it was announced that Anderson would marry Kid Rock on July 29, 2006 on a yacht near Saint-Tropez, France. Then in February of 2007, Anderson said that she often had relations with Lee since their divorce. 
In June 2008, Pam and Tommy tried for the third time at Romantic Bliss, a year after Anderson had divorced musician Kid Rock and annulled her marriage to Rick Solomon. Anderson and Lee still cared for each other long after their divorce. They considered remarrying. The couple split for good in 2010, and in 2020, Pam Anderson had a brief marriage to Dan Hayhurst, her bodyguard for a year, but Anderson recently filed for divorce in 2022. Today, Pam Anderson is single, but Tommy Lee married Brittany Ferlin in 2019 an internet personality and former Vine social media star. Lee seems to be very happy while Anderson focuses on her career and kids. Quote, there was Tommy and then there was nobody else. He was the love of my life. We had a wild and crazy beginning that was too much for both of us, unquote. Pamela told People in 2015. It really was love at first sight. I only knew him for four days before I met him. I had beautiful children with him, she continued. My kids are grateful to be born out of true love. Everything else I was trying to piece together, unquote. The two were committed to raising their children together, even after their history. Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee, who were married from 1995 to 1998, had one of the wildest rock and roll marriages of all time. Now, 17 years after their divorce, Anderson tells people that Lee was her true love and there will never ever be another man like Tommy Lee. Anderson and Lee were married for three rock and romantic and tumultuous years. They endured romance, domestic violence, had two lovely kids, and dealt with a sex tape the world hasn't forgotten. Though they knew little about each other, they are forever in love and forever known as Pam and Tommy amidst their bombshell Hollywood divorce. Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee's divorce was among the most remembered divorce stories in the 1990s. Their forbidden and complicated marriage went from bliss to tabloid news via a sex tape and then collapsed. Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee were one of the world's most iconic it couples, and their relationship ended in a bombshell Hollywood divorce. Their case will be added to the Hollywood divorce files. So there you have it. What do you think about Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee's Hollywood divorce? Did your favorite couple make it into the Hollywood divorce files? We'd love to hear your thoughts about what A-list pair we should include in the show's next episode. Leave a comment below. If you haven't already done so, please like this video, click the bell to stay up to date on our upcoming videos, and subscribe. Also, join us on Instagram, TikTok, and Meta for more content. For more information on Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee's life and career, check out the various book, film, and memorabilia links below. Until next time, Glamour Gals, this is Hollywood Divorce.